Salutations, everybody. It is Maddie here today. And finally, we're sitting down to dive into a topic that's been highly requested on the channel since I dropped my review for Starfield Shattered Space. And the question you may have following that up is, well, why'd you wait so long if this was such a requested topic? I'm a big believer in taking the time you need to have the tough conversations. And I also wanted to get away from the emotionality of the release window that is Starfield Shattered Space. I was feeling a lot of immense disappointment with that. I've gone into that a couple of videos now. And I also wanted to spread it out. I don't want to just have it rain negative aura all over my channel if I can control some of that. I like to space out my critical pieces and try to handle it with a level of grace so I'm not just constantly pounding the same points home four days in a row. I feel like they lose some of their meaning, so I try to handle it with some level of responsibility. But this one in particular, I really wanted to take some time to mull on the subject matter, to think, am I concerned about Elder Scrolls 6? Is it just a little blip on the radar here with Shattered Space? Is it a sign of bigger things to come? I have lots of thoughts. Certainly, I've had a lot of time to develop them. And I encourage you, as always, to share yours down below. Are you excited for Elder Scrolls 6 after everything that's happened with Starfield and Bethesda as of late? Or are you feeling a little bit unfazed in that this is just a bump in the road otherwise to the journey to Elder Scrolls 6? I'm curious to see where your thoughts lie. For me personally, I'm going to categorize this conversation in two areas. One is personally speaking, as in just me and my thoughts. I'm going to go first with that. The next is broadly speaking, like just speaking on a broader sense of the things I read online, the general scuttlebutt around Bethesda, the vibes, if you will. We're vibe checking from there on and just laying out a couple of facts and potential situations that surround Elder Scrolls 6 that could either help it out or hurt it. So without further delay, thank you for your patience. Let's talk about Elder Scrolls 6. Now, Speaking in a bubble, if I'm looking at Bethesda Game Studios in a post-Shattered Space world, am I looking at just that DLC and going, man, I'm worried for Elder Scrolls 6? Quite frankly, no. It's a much broader issue at play here that I've talked about throughout this whole Starfield DLC saga that, frankly, I expected to just be a one and done, like, oh, it's going to come out with some DLC, I'm going to review it, and move on to the next thing. But obviously, with comments from Todd Howard and Emil Pagliarulo, it spiraled quite a bit which is why my point is moved to it's not really a shattered space problem, but really to me a growing concern with Bethesda. I know many people are going to say, well, I've been there for years and congrats to you. For me, I haven't hated everything they've done in recent years, but I also haven't loved it as much as since Fallout 4 for me. For many people, that line is drawn with Skyrim. We'll get into that a little bit when we speak broadly. But for me personally, the line of quality was really drawn with Fallout 4. I love that game. I love the characters. I love the world. I love the stories that are packed into it. I also happen to absolutely love Fallout. It's my favorite IP in gaming. So yeah, I absolutely adore Fallout and really anything to deal with it. But funny enough, the next game after this was Fallout 76, which I can only stand for so long. Now, its latest update earlier this year in Skyline Valley, its latest major update, I should say, was actually really great and a great time to launch it as the game was experiencing a resurgence. But as I said in my 2024 review, I've kind of gone through the hurt and the pain of 76 all throughout its launch. So now when it's finally got its legs, I'm kind of a little jaded by the product. But anyway, point being is there's that. And then Starfield, as I said in my impressions and my full review of the game, is a title that I like a lot. I think it has a lot of good stuff going for it. In particular, I like the characters. I like the faction storylines. And I do love space and sci-fi and Bethesda's take on that. But I've gone in numerous times on the issues that the game has, which is why out of the pantheon of Bethesda Game Studios IP, it is my least favorite. So for me, compared to others out there, it has been a less bumpy ride. I kind of looked at 76 as this anomaly, like there's no way they do something like that again. And then that's where I had that whiplash moment with Shattered Space, which is not anywhere close to 76 levels bad, but maybe in the terms of disappointment for me on a personal level is where I was kind of trending toward of this is what they're putting out. And I know this is a long setup for my major talking point here, but again, I put a lot of time and thought into this, so hopefully you can at least appreciate that I'm not just spitting hot take after hot take here, and then I try to take this with a level of seriousness. But when I look at Shattered Space, the biggest concern started to rise out of me when I saw Emil Pagliarulo say that designers and people who have been working at Bethesda Game Studios since Morrowind helped make Shattered Space. To me, that's indicative of what I said in that video when we learned that issue is a systemic issue a quality-based issue. Because a lot of people point to things like Creation Engine and go, that's the problem. And, and Bethesda can't make a true hardcore role-playing experience with Creation Engine. But I look at the mods and even things that Bethesda's made like Far Harbor, and I'm like, they can make an RPG experience in here and they can make a tight RPG experience in there. 
The problem is it's the design decisions and the ones they're making, I don't feel have been either A, great, or B, in line with what many of their fans are looking for out of their games. I've talked about this ad nauseum with kind of the, the talk from Bethesda Game Studios of simulation, of living in these worlds, and not really focusing on what made them livable in the first place, which is the way they built out content and exploration and the unique items you'd find in their worlds and the unique characters you'd find in their world and the factions you'd find in their worlds. That's what made you want to live in those worlds and as i highlighted in a video i've been plugging a lot lately but please do check it out if you missed it because it is one of my favorite videos i've made called how skyrim ruined bethesda that was a major inflection point for them as a team where they started to adjust what was important to them as a development studio to keep longevity with their games because skyrim was played so much that they kind of missed the point as to why Skyrim was played so much, which is because it's a generational video game. It's a damn good video game, but they would instead pack it into features like Fallout 4 settlement mode or Starfield's procedural content to give it a sense of endlessness for players who wanted to sit down and quote, live in their worlds. And that's what does concern me about Elder Scrolls 6 is the educated design decisions are fading for me. For example, I look at Shattered Space which really set off this whole conversation. And I go, well, what triggers concern for me in that piece of content there? And for me, at least, it really lies in the fact that when they decided to do a more focused, explorable experience, it felt very much not good or well thought out. And it was like, oh, they're checking a box, but they're not understanding what checking this box of exploration on foot actually means in a Bethesda Game Studios game. And it feels like more and more, it's calling for a moment to just pull back and go back to the drawing board. But the real question that I've been asking about Elder Scrolls 6 to a lot of my friends is, can this game ever actually deliver on expectations? And I think that's a very fair question to ask if you remove yourself from all of the Bethesda zeitgeist and you just look at it objectively. We're talking about the last game in the series being Skyrim, a generational open world video game, love it or hate it, that's what it is. And then afterwards, for many people, not all, but for many people, Bethesda Game Studios delivered some of their, I put this in quotes, Worst content ever across Fallout 4, Fallout 76, Starfield, and Shattered Space. So a lot of the faith in the developer that made things from Morrowind to Skyrim has faded. And as they're stepping into absolutely their most important video game ever in company history, confidence in them is kind of at a low. And the reason this game is important is two things. Number one, I think this is Todd Howard's last Elder Scrolls game. That doesn't mean the series stops with him. But number two... It's kind of the GTA 6 effect. Like, do you think Rockstar is going to make another Grand Theft Auto after GTA 6 with all the buildup, all the hype, and the way they supported online from a 2013 game? It's really tough to imagine. And I feel the same way about Elder Scrolls 7, which feels absurd to say out loud. But think about, at the very least, how long that wait will be with Elder Scrolls 6 to Elder Scrolls 7. Because Todd's already firmed up, like, after Elder Scrolls 6, we're going back to Fallout 5, and then... Who knows what happens after that? Is, do you go back to Elder Scrolls again? Or do you do, honestly, I hate to say it for some people, but War with Starfield. There's a lot of questions in there where it's going to be another long wait at the very minimum for another Elder Scrolls game. But this one is the biggest one because with Oblivion, there was an expectation of greatness and they delivered on it. Morrowind was obviously the back against the wall moment. Skyrim was just the crowning jewel moment. And then obviously we've seen, for some people, the descent afterwards. And the expectation remains the same. You're following up Skyrim. You have to make Elder Scrolls 6 pure greatness. Because also, I think there may not just be an Elder Scrolls 7. And if it is, it'll be by an entirely different team, an entirely different feel. Or do you just reboot at that point because you reached the big one with all of the zeitgeist? Because on the business front, you can't act like hype doesn't drive a ton of game sales. I look at just how phenomenal Baldur's Gate 3 was, and then you combine that with the game hype it got, and it sold way more copies than I think anyone ever anticipated. So will you have that hype level at an Elder Scrolls 7, especially if it does miss? So I think they are capable of delivering a great game with the team they have and the technology they have even, believe it or not. I'm more so concerned about the design choices they're making and understanding what players look for in their experience, especially since all of these I personally have interpreted poor choices made have stemmed from Skyrim, which they're about to now make the next entry in the series Skyrim hails from, where it could also centralize a lot of those 
poor decisions that were made. No doubt that Elder Scrolls 6, as Todd confirmed in an interview with me, is going to be this very endless product. Like, there's going to be years of support, as we're seeing the same thing for Starfield. And they continue to come back around to Skyrim all these years later. And they continue to come back to even Fallout 4 to a lesser degree and unfortunately break the game and then <laughs> leave it behind. But they do come back to these games. I think if I'm really on the outside looking in, what I hope Bethesda Game Studios does is at the very minimum just focus all the talent they have across their staff on Elder Scrolls 6. And by talent, I mean like manpower. Because Bethesda Game Studios is, on AAA level, a small team, comparatively speaking. Like, they have four to 500 people on their team, which is a lot. But you compare that to something like a Ubisoft, who's an anomaly, admittedly, with like 20,000 employees almost. But you even look at it compared to a Rockstar or a 2K or all these different companies, and they're way bigger than the types of games that Bethesda Game Studios is making. So I hope if they've waited this long, by the way, two generations to, Todd's words, not mine, make the game that they always dreamt of making for Elder Scrolls Six, and that's why they waited for it. They needed the technology to be ready. And that's the craziest thing about it all. The pressure has never been higher, socially speaking, about just like faith in the company and can they deliver on this. And the reality is that many people feel they have to just by nature of this product and the weight behind it. And the question is, with design choices they've made, is are they going to go the Starfield route of like, we're going to make all of Tamriel and it's all going to be explorable. And obviously a lot of this is going to be procedural. Or are they going to do what Elder Scrolls is known to do and focus on a specific location? I say all that because one thing we have noticed in these interviews is I have viewed it as Bethesda Game Studios starting to create a line between Starfield and its other IP. They keep going back to terminology like, it's got its own identity. It stands separately from the rest. And if that means pretty much, I think, a worser version of what you've offered in prior games, then I guess that is Starfield's identity to many people. But to others, it's the space exploration, the simulation, that sort of thing. But I still feel like I'm witnessing the line being drawn of like, Starfield is not Elder Scrolls. And while they haven't outright said that in fairness, that's the vibe I am starting to get. I have yet to see like full verbiage truly confirming that. But I am not seeing right now them saying like, yeah, that thing you love in Starfield, expect that in our future games, right? Like, I totally anticipate there's going to be some sort of vehicle building system in Elder Scrolls 6 by nature of how Bethesda Game Studios just shares their resources across game to game to game. Like, hey, Hearthfire was basically the start of Fallout 4 settlement mode when you think about it. So it probably makes sense that you're going to see some sort of town building or settlement building in Elder Scrolls 6. So that's probably not going anywhere. And then the scope expands again. Like, oh, they're probably going to do, I would imagine, boat building. Because in Starfield, you have ship building. So how do you expand that into Elder Scrolls Six? Like, this is the nature of the beast. I call this pattern recognition. Like, many people are like, you're just shooting from the hip on predictions. I'm like, I don't think I'm going to be very wrong when this is all said and done. I don't say that in a cocky way. Y'all know I'm not a hesitant to take my L's. I'll happily take them. But I just feel like I know this company extremely well. And this is the path they're headed down. And I just hope... More than anything, they understand the significance of the path they're on. So that's just me. I know this video is getting long-winded, but me personally speaking, to kind of put a bow on it, do I feel worried about Elder Scrolls 6? In some ways, yes. I just can't sit here and tell you till I'm blue in the face, like, have faith, y'all. It's going to be great because there are things that even I, as a diehard fan who feels like I understand the company, I understand the developer, I understand the games well, like, I'm schooled in these types of games for god's sakes they practically raised me throughout my teen and college years like i feel like they're a science to me if i'm having problems then that to me just signifies there is a core issue here that i hope they figure out am i on the boat with other people where they're like i hate all bethesda games i lost all faith in them they're no longer fun i'm not interested in anything they do no i'm not even close to that because i still don't forget the games that they made just like I hate to say it, but even with like Bioware, like where they made games I care about. So there will always be some level of investment. I guess that's the shitty hand I was dealt as a kid. Like there's always going to be some investment in what Bioware's up to. There's always going to be some investment in what Bethesda Game Studio is up to because these games practically raised me. They were so important to my childhood, especially Bioware. So yeah, like I'm not on that side of the fence where I'm like hating everything they're doing, but that's me on a personal level. Broadly speaking, however, like how are other people feeling? I feel everywhere I go, I see people going, I'm not excited for Elder Scrolls 6 anymore. And part of that is the mistake Bethesda Game Studios made, which is going to, you know, really cascade a little bit further here, is the early announcement, the anticipation, and being able to witness everything in the build-up to Elder Scrolls 6. I mean, the assumption after a Starfield world, even without an Elder Scrolls 6, is that certainly in the next game you make, 
has to be ES6, right? And maybe even more of a demand for a comeback. I say that because if you don't know Elder Scrolls 6 exists, you have this whole exact same situation with Starfield go down. Maybe the anticipation is get back to what you were good at, Bethesda, versus can they make something good again, which I'm just seeing a lot of energy for. And again, my answer to that is I still think they can make good stuff. If they misdeliver on Elder Scrolls 6, I will be whistling a whole different tune in your direction for sure. But I don't want to speak for everybody because there are many people in my audience who I know are very much having faith in Bethesda Game Studios. And let's take a fair look at that side of the coin. Like, why would you have faith in Bethesda Game Studios? I think their games are definitely getting bigger in a way that you could view as a plus. And I say that because Starfield is big in one way, but imagine if you took the scope of that and then shrunk it down and just really made like one world out of that i think you could get a lot of if you look at starfield less is compartmentalized and more as like one whole thing i think there's a lot there that people would have fallen in love with if it was less broken up and like imagine if that world just stretched an extreme distance and there were so many locations between say the uc vanguard and what's going on with the free star rangers and it was just all cohesive and i think a lot of people take that imagination of what that can be like and then kind of pack it into what Elder Scrolls 6 should be, as in it should be continuous, cohesive exploration, full of factions and quest lines and locations to discover, that sort of thing. I also think that Elder Scrolls 6 and its excitement for a lot of people hinge on the words of what Todd and the team have shared, which is like, hey, we've waited a while to make this game. We've waited for specific technology to make what we want to achieve. And the question is, what is that? And the community speculation that I've shared, and I think a lot of people have gotten on board with, is I think they're going to go for full out wars. Because when you look at like Oblivion and the Oblivion Gates and the fight against like all these demon like characters falling out of the Oblivion Gate, or you look at the, I put this in quotes, battles the skirmishes that happen in Skyrim where there's like squads of like Imperial soldiers fighting Stormcloaks there really isn't a feeling of war despite the narrative depicting that and I feel like what they've been waiting for with Elder Scrolls 6 is how can we actually capture the feeling of war especially because if you read some of the lore that seems to be setting up Elder Scrolls 6 that's within Skyrim it seems like we're heading toward a very politically thick plot that's going to include a lot of war and a lot of conflict. And if it does, then you pull that into the shipbuilding. Do you have like ship combat? Do you have like sieging castles, storming the breach? Like, what do you get? And I think for a lot of people, it's a lot of the imagination. I think there's stuff in like the substance, like there's stuff that people are seeing and playing. Like Bethesda Game Studio games, people used to joke about how bad they felt, but I don't think we give them enough credit for like how good their shooters feel. Like Starfield is a pretty good feeling first person shooter. Um, it's not as impressive because Bethesda Game Studios has been working on shooters for a while compared to something like CD Projekt Red with Cyberpunk, where they went from third person action combat to first person shooting in Cyberpunk. And you'd feel like they've been making first person shooters for their entire studio's lifetime. But point being is, I think there are things that are worth believing in Bethesda. Some people still believe in the leadership core at Bethesda Game Studios. And I still have faith because the people that are there are still the ones that produce to me the games that I fell in love with, the Fallout 3s, the Oblivions, the Morrowinds, that sort of thing. And I can respect and understand that even if my position has shifted a little bit on, you know, I think of it a lot like a sports team, right? Where you have that same management that won you like a dynasty, but eventually you're not winning anymore and you got to figure out how to win again. And that's where new hires come in, new blood comes in. And perhaps that's at the core for some people of Bethesda Game Studios issues. But nonetheless, it's a fascinating conversation to have that I just wanted to dig into here because we're at that good time to talk about it before we actually just see the game whenever that year comes. But what's crazy to process is that's next up. Like that's the next thing we see from them. There's going to be a time where we're sitting there and we get Elder Scrolls 6 news or maybe a leak or a trailer, whatever it may be. Because just like Starfield, that was what was next up after Fallout 76. And a lot of people attach themselves to that as sort of like, this is the rebound effort after 76. And I think knowing how I've seen multiple BGS launches, the same thing will probably happen with ES6, especially if it captures a fraction of the magic that Skyrim had. But nonetheless, I'm rambling now. This is a very long-winded video, but hopefully you can see, took a lot of time to think about it. I have lots of thoughts on Elder Scrolls 6, and I'm looking forward to hearing yours down below. For me, all in all, yeah, my faith has been whittled away from, I would say it's fragile. I still want them to make the best game they possibly can. I still hope it is an incredible game, and no one will be cheering it on more than I, but I would be lying if I said I didn't have some bit of worries now the other thing that you can throw out there is just a final thought that came to my mind is that some of the bgs talent that makes good bgs games is off working on elder scroll 6 and not really focused on shattered space and the support for starfield where 
again, as I mentioned in a previous video, you kind of got energy from Starfield Chatter Space of like, we want to we want to move on. <laughs> so I wouldn't blame them if they just said, yeah, after everything that we got blasted for online, like, we probably just want to go work on the game people are actually excited for. But time will tell with that excitement. Nonetheless, ladies and gentlemen, I leave it in your hands. Fire away. And with that, I will catch you in the next video. Stay sexy. Stay active. I love you all. Peace.